I'm starting a new series this morning entitled Strong. Someone say strong. Strong. It's my goal in 2024 it's for you to cultivate a relationship with a person that I really believe can change your life. After traveling and meeting people across the country, I think I finally found the person that could personally help you become all that I feel God is calling you to be. Who is that, Pastor Mike? It's the strong you. I'm going to say that again. I cannot wait to introduce you to the strong you. Because whether we know it or not, some of us have been fighting to survive for so long, we really don't even know what we would look like if we were actually at full capacity and strong. I want to speak by faith that this is going to be the year that you are at your maximum strength. This is going to be the year that you tap into every gift that God has placed on the inside of you. You don't got to say amen, but you can at least say, I receive that. This is my year to be strong. So there are a couple questions, three in particular, I want you to answer over the next 60 days. If you don't mind, put this in your notes, put this in your phone. Who is the strong you? That's a critical question. Who is the strong you? Pastor Mike, that don't make sense. No, nah, because when I say strong you, the first thing you think about is I can take some stuff and I'm not going to let nobody walk all over me and I'm going to be who I got to be. No, 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 no. Who's the strong you? Can I ask you a question? What if I told you you've been killing the game at half strength? What is the world going to do with you when you get all your strength in the right place? Who? It's the strong you. Can I be honest? I had to ask this myself this question because I'm not sure, Stephanie. I'm not sure, Carrie. I'm not sure, Brian, if I know what it's like to be strong. I've always had to fight for my peace, fight for my strength, fight for my sanity, fight for my joy. I cannot particularly remember a season of my life where I went into something fully prepared for what I was getting ready to walk in. I want to ask you a question. Who is the strong you? But not only who is the strong you, number two, what will the strong me accomplish? What will the strong me accomplish? That's very critical. Why, Pastor Mike? Because I've discovered that when I chase things that God is not desired for me to chase, I may catch them, but I don't end up nowhere. Y'all don't miss what I just said right there. So, no, number one, who is the strong me? Number two, what will the strong me accomplish? Number three, this is my favorite, what can God do through the strong me? That's critical. What can God do through the strong me? Somebody say strong. This is critical. When we look throughout the annals of history, God gave certain people gifts. When we look throughout uh, this sacred text that we call the canons, the Bible, God gave certain people gifts. He gave some the gift of the prophetic. They were able to prophesy. They were able to see the future. Certain people got the oil for deliverance. They were able to go tell Pharaoh, let my people go. But there was one brother by the name of Samson who was given strength. Michael, he was given strength, but he was given strength, but he only had one rule. You can be as strong as you need to be. Just don't let nobody, Michael, cut your hair. And what did he discover? The only time his hair got cut is when he let down his guard and he was connected to people who were stroking his ego, but all the while trying to determine how to get to the source of his strength. Which is why if you're going to be strong in 2024, you might need to do an inventory check because you may be sharing stuff with people who are just around you for what you do. And once they realize they can't do what you do, they try to cut you so you won't able to be able to. Am I preaching to anybody early in this message? Somebody say strong. This is why Proverbs 24 and 10 says, if you fail under pressure, your strength is too small. Proverbs says, if you fail under pressure, your strength is too small. I like how the New King James Version said it because that gave me somewhat of anxiety because I was trying to picture God. So you mean to tell me if I ever fail, I'm weak. He said, no, Michael, go to the New King James Version. New King James Version says, if you faint, Michael, in the day of adversity, 
your strength is too small. That made it make sense because all of us going to fail. Nobody's going to live a perfect life. Nobody going to get all the answers to the test right. Nobody going to always do what you're supposed to do. Failure is a part of it sometimes. But this next word makes it very clear. God says, no, no, no. What I mean is if you faint, Look at the words, on the day of adversity, meaning what the devil does with most people, the devil don't even attack you. He just presents you with possible attacks. And he knows that you're so scary that at the sight of a possible attack, you faint. That's why some of y'all be cussing before the bill even behind. Bill ain't even late yet and you already stressed on Monday. Bill ain't due till Friday and here it is Tuesday. You already irritated, aggravated, frustrated, crying, talking about you don't know what you're going to do and God came through that Thursday. But God is saying, why you just didn't stand strong? Am, am I preaching to anybody? People be telling you, keep messing with me, I'm going to walk out. You're like, don't leave, don't leave. No, this is going to be the year that when you see the adversity coming, Folk going to look at you different this year trying to figure out, oh, so you think you're on another? I'm not on another level. I just realized who I am, and I realized who got me. Because too much of my life been spent expecting people to hold me down. And I discovered the reason I can't blow up is because all y'all holding me down. I need God to hold me. You ought to just jump up and shout strong. If you faint, so hear me, pressure is going to come. I'm not going to do that thing. We're not doing that this year. No, no, we're not doing it this year. You know that game we play every year where I come up and say, this is going to be the year. You get more money than you ever get. And because you want to hear that, you slap your neighbor, her weave go this way, you punch this dude, his, you drinking your drink, everybody having church. No, I'm not telling you it's going to be big. I'm not telling you it's about to be amazing. I'm not telling you it's about to be great. The word that I heard God speak to me in October was get ready. Because this year, going to be strong. Now, you missed it, okay, Pastor Mike? It's going to be strong. My son Mason came home excited the other day. He said, Dad, we had to max out on the football team, and my max jumped by almost 100 pounds. I said, ooh, that's cold-blooded. I said, what's your max used to be? He told me what his max used to be. I said, what you been doing? Mm. He said, I've been lifting. <laughs> Michael. He said, I've been lifting. I, I said, what you mean, Mace? He said, well, it wasn't that I ever lifted what I lifted today. But consistently, over the last six weeks, I've been lifting what I could lift. And today, I guess it all pay. See, you so ready to boom that you don't realize God ain't just going to let you boom. Because if he put all that on you today, it would crush you. But God said, I've been watching how you've been lifting in 2023. I watched how you was faithful in 2022. I watched how you was nice to nasty people in 2021. I saw you in the pandemic where you could have looked out for yourself, but you were still looking out for everybody else. He said, get ready because this is going to be the year you can handle some real weight. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, I'm strong. And I'm not telling you to be strong simply because you need strength. That's not what I'm telling you. What I'm telling you is I am placing, watch this, the quality. Can you put this in your notes? Can somebody watching online put this in the comments? In overflow, somebody put this in your notes. The quality of my year is on me, not what happens to me. That's critical. The quality of my year is on me, not what happens to me. Now, I, don't, I know you don't want to hear this, but I'm going to say it anyway. Okay, if you go to work tomorrow, and when you get there, they call you in the office and say, I'm sorry, but we can no longer employ you, and you get fired, what I'm telling you is that's rough. That's going to be tough. It's going to be hard. But what I'm telling you is since we're deciding to be strong, we're not going to spend all 2024 crying because they let us go in January. Because truth of the matter is, even with that check, it wasn't enough to do all the stuff. You... No, you're going to sit there because you're going to have a reality check. Part of you going to want to cry. But you're going to hear your pastor in your ear, we're strong this year. And you're going to realize, no, y'all ain't my source. My source, my source is God. Therefore, 
what happens to me does not determine how I behave. It does not determine what I believe. And it does not determine what I speak. The quality of 2024 rests on you. Nobody said amen right there. It's cool in the game. Y'all gonna leave me hanging like this on national TV, huh? The quality of 2024 is on you. If don't nobody come rescue you, you mean to tell me that if you need help, Pastor Mike, they know I need help. So you're going to sit here for 360 days and complain that won't nobody help you out when God put in you the power to pick your... Okay, your neighbor ain't shouting because they like people helping them. See, some of y'all are not even in trouble. You just like the attention. You know that if I post pray for me, people going to come to my rescue. You know if you walk in sad, they're going to say what's wrong. No, I don't need a pity party. This going to be the year that if don't nobody come to my rescue, this going to be the year that if everybody walks out in my life, my hope is built. Am I preaching to anybody on nothing less but Jesus' blood and his righteousness? I'm about to meet the strong me. Why, Pastor Mike, and three of y'all going to catch this, a strong me in a bad economy is better than a weak me in a good economy. A strong me on a bad job is better than a weak me on a good job. A strong me with nobody <laughs> is better than a weak me with somebody. Y'all don't hear me. Y'all don't hear me in here. Hear me in here. Can I preach to three folk in here who can testify to the reality that some of the seasons when you didn't have none of what you needed was also some of the most peaceful seasons that you ever walked into? Can I preach to three folk? Why? Because put this in your notes. You are only as strong as your source. Do y'all hear what I'm saying? You are only as strong as your source. Let's go to work. Here's some good notes for you. Somebody say strong. Strong. The quality of power and might which characterizes God and his relationship to his creation. See, that's the biblical definition of strength. That's the biblical definition of strong. That is not the Webster definition of strong. And I want to warn you, if Webster is the only book that you can define words, you will always live according to man's definitions. So Webster is telling you that in order to be strong, you have to have strength. God is saying your strength comes from relationship. Michael, strength is the quality or power and might which characterizes God and his relationship. Put scripture on it, Pastor Mike. Apart from me, you can do nothing. I don't think you caught that. Apart from me, you can do nothing. Strength, somebody say strength. No, I need you to catch this because the problem that most of us face, you might want to write this, human strength can lead to rebellion against God on account of a belief in your own ability. Michael, human strength can lead to rebellion against God because of a belief in your own sufficiency. Michael, so what happens is you start believing in your skill in your degree, in your intellect, in yourself, and in your track record so much that you don't even realize you stop pursuing stuff that makes you use faith. And you start pursuing stuff that you think you can attain based off your facts. And what I came to tell you is, yes, you got enough credit. Yes, you got enough money in the bank. Yes, you got a con enough connections on earth to get that. But what you don't even realize is had you tapped into God, he would have co-signed for you to get the exceeding. The abundant, I'm preaching to three of y'all, the above, am I preaching to anybody? And hear me when I say this, put this in your notes, strength is the inner resolve or the physical ability to accomplish an endeavor, Michael, influence an outcome or prevail in a conflict. This is good to me. I, I, I'm finna run. God forgive me. What is strength, Pastor Mike? Leave that definition so they can get it. It is the inner resolve. Somebody say inner resolve. What have I been telling you for six weeks? It's this belief in you that what's going on around you won't shift what you know in you. 
Jesus Christ. It is the inner resolve, the physical ability, here's a word for three people, to accomplish something. I don't know who I'm preaching to this year, but if I don't do nothing else in 2024, it's some stuff I'm accomplished this year. It's some stuff that's been on my list three and four years that I ain't hit yet, that the devil is a lie. I'm going to accomplish that thing this year. If don't nobody bump you, if don't nobody high five you, you ought to high five yourself and say, I'm accomplishing something this year. I got too many goals. Is there anybody who's honest enough to say there are certain things I've been talking about now for three, four, five Years, and every year I say I'm going to do it, but some kind of way I let life or I let my circumstances cause me to lose focus. This year I'm accomplishing something. I am accomplishing it. And what I've discovered, what I've discovered is that most of us do not accomplish it because we are trying to do it in our own strength. Ooh, I'm going to say this and three of y'all going to catch this. You are only as strong as your source. So, Pastor Mike, who's your source? God um, is the source of my strength. What does strength translate to mean? The definition is on the screen. Stay right there. It is the ability to accomplish an endeavor. It is also the ability to influence an outcome. It is the ability to influence an outcome, Michael. It is the ability to influence an outcome, Michael. It is the ability to influence an outcome. You want to know what I speak over your life? Influence. I'm in the wrong church today. Do you want to know what I speak over your life? I speak influence over your life. Because some of you want money, and I've lived long enough now to realize influence is way better than money. Influence will open doors that money don't even know exists. Y'all miss what I just said right there. I speak influence. See, influence, I take my boy, we always go for spring break. We go to Gulf Shores and we go to Orange Beach, right? We like going down there. The boys get to go out there by the ocean and Miles, since he's the baby, Miles loves the waves. So Miles, Champ Chance, they go stand in the ocean and y'all kids do this too. I don't know what type of sense it make. When the wave come, what they do? They just jump. Like, like they literally got the ability to jump over a wave, right? And so I don't, I hype them up. Go deeper, go farther, go further. So not they out there to the point when they jump, the wave just knocking them down, but they having the time of their life. It's only one problem. We get back to the house and they get on the pool. They get in the pool and now they standing in the pool mad because the pool ain't got no waves. I looked at the pool, then I looked at my body and I said, I might have enough weight <laughs> to change their situation. So I eased down into the water and I Before I know it, miles them at the other end of the pool. Oh, but wait, they didn't realize what they didn't have in this environment. I had enough in. Watch this. Because the wave they enjoyed on that side was because of the influence I had on this side. And your family would treat you better. Your friends would treat you better. Your co-workers would treat you better if they realized some of the stuff that's flowing in their direction is because of the influence I got on this side. You sit next to a hater, you ought to reach over that hater, high five another neighbor and shout, I'm a wave maker. No, God is a way maker, but I am a wave maker. That if you stay close to me long enough, I'll make some flow in your diet. I wish I had a hundred folk who would just jump up and give God a wave praise. That when I move in room, stuff start. You waiting on somebody to open the door for you, you better start a wave talking about ain't nobody doing that's why folk don't understand you they always say stuff you ain't nobody doing that I'm a new wave baby that when I start something it's gonna catch a ripple and people gonna understand what I do as a matter of fact my family gonna be blessed because of me this year my circle gonna be blessed because of me this year just bump somebody and shout start the wave have you ever been to a football game and you were sitting on the other side of the stadium then all of a sudden you minding your business, then you see, oh my God, they done started the wave. And you could literally see it forming. Now, I don't care who you are, 
the closer it gets to you, you'll be like, oh, here it come. Here it come. Because I know if the wave is in my neighbors, that means it's in my... This the first Sunday of the church. We gonna do the wave. I, we gonna do the wave. And the next day you will say, oh... And see, the problem is, this is why some of us ain't blessed. Because whenever God sends something your way, you should have sent it back the other way. That's why your friends fake. Because the more you do for them, they don't never do nothing for you. But tell your neighbor this time, when God sent a blessing to my house, I'm going to send it back to you. Just look at somebody and shout, something's coming in my life this year. Something's shifting in my life this year. And if I need a blessing in my life, I'm going to bless somebody. Because I know it's coming back goodness. Somebody say strong. strong. So what I'm trying to get you to realize is the command that we miss. It's the every time God tells us, be strong. Michael, look at Ephesians chapter 6 verse 10. Finally, be strong in the Lord and his mighty power. Now, you didn't get excited because you don't realize Ephesians chapter 6 is where we learned the scripture, put on the whole armor. God, I need a Baptist church. I, see, this is why I like 9 o'clock way better than y'all. I'm going to be honest with you. I love 11.30 because it be on point, but 9 o'clock... That's the service I like preaching to. Them my old seasoned saints. It don't take a lot. I can just literally tell them, put on. You know what they say? The whole armor of God. When I say that at 1130, you be so put on for my city. No. No, no not the for your city. Put on what? But look at what he tells them. Who's heard that in church before? Put on the whole armor of God. Who knew that before he told you to put it on, he said, be strong. You want to know why? Can I free you? Because what's the use in putting on the armor if you're still scary? What's the use in walking in favor if you're still scary? So God says, no, 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 no. I'm going to give you something that's the truth. But the problem is, you're going to have to be strong. Let's look at the message version. Look at how it makes it plain in the message version. And that about wraps it up. Oh, my God. God is strong. And he wants you strong. So take, Michael, everything the master has set out for you. Well-made weapons, well-made weapons of the best material and put them to use so you will be able to stand up to everything the devil throws at you. See, y'all don't even know good scripture no more. He says, so you will be able to stand up against everything the devil throws at you. Why is that so important, Pastor Mike? Because I'm 40 now. I keep telling y'all I'm old. I'm 40 now, right? So 40-year-old PMJ is drastically different than 30-something PMJ. Now that I'm 40, I realize when I read this scripture, I see stuff that I didn't see when I was younger. When I was younger, I would have been shouting because it said, put them on so you will be able to stand up against everything the devil throws your way. And I would have told the whole church up right there because the devil be throwing stuff your way, but you still going to be able to stand. But now that I done lived a little bit, I realize, Sierra, that it's certain stuff that was thrown my way in 2023, the devil didn't throw. All right, you ain't going to say amen, but it's cool. Some of the stuff that knocked me down last year, I found out once it was over, God did that. Y'all don't like me. Y'all don't like me. There was a man in the Bible by the name of Saul, and the text says a light hits him and knocks him to the ground. And when we look back at that particular text, has Saul been able to testify? What if Saul would have said the enemy's busy? Mm -mm. Saul didn't get knocked down by the devil. Saul got knocked down by God. 
Why? Because whenever God wants to spark transformation, he always calls his confrontation. <laughs> Michael, I'm preaching. You caught that. No, some of y'all keep praying, God, get me out of this. And God, like, I can't get you out of it. And you like, why? Because I put you. <laughs> Can I ask you a question? If my son get into a fight and I hear him yell, Daddy, we fight. I'm running and I'm getting my baby out that fight. And if they don't want to break up the fight, your pastor going to be on World Star because I'm going to be fighting with my baby. I love mine. Forget you. We're going to be throwing all hands with my baby. But if I'm giving my son a whooping and my dad, he says, daddy, help. I can't help when I'm the one. Because when the air devil comes, it's for destruction. When God sent this, it's for discipline. See, I ain't get a lot of amens right there. Because some of y'all only want the stuff that's going to make you shout. I got you. You're going to get a house this year. You're going to get a car this year. You're going to get a promotion this year. Go and shout. God bless you. But for those of us who realize if I don't get discipline, I'm going to keep losing what God keeps giving me. If I don't get discipline, I'm going to treat the next person like I treated the last person. If I don't get discipline, I'm going to end up right back where I started. This year has to be shit. Critical. He says, he says, he says, you're going to be able to stand against everything the devil throws your way. But look at what he says in verse 12. This is no afternoon athletic contest that we'll walk away from and forget about in a couple hours. This is for keeps. A life or death fight to the finish against the devil and all his angels. 13, be prepared. You're up against more than you can handle on your own. Take all the help you can get. Every weapon God has issued. That's the armor of God. You see it now? So that you, that when it's all over, but the shout. My God, I told y'all I need a better church. Nine o'clock, told that part over. When it's all over, but the shout. All right, I told y'all I'm 40 and I see stuff differently now. All right, because he says, you're going to be fighting. And when it's all over, but the shout. You, you, you missed it. You missed it. He said, all the fighting going to be over. But all you're going to hear is the shouting. Now, I got to free you, all right? He said it's going to be all over, but, which means but is a continuation in the sense of what's been taking place, which means you're going to be so strong in this season that while you're fighting, you're going to be praising. And you're going to know the fight is over, but the praise ain't going to... That's one, that's two, that's three. See, because there are three types of people sitting on your row. One of y'all got enough sense to praise God at the beginning of it. Then one of y'all, most of y'all can shout at the end of it. But it take a different type of person to praise God while you're still in it. That's why your neighbor don't know what to do with you. Because based off your praise, they don't know if the bill paid or the bill just... That's why he said, I will bless the Lord at... I just need you to look at your neighbor and shout my praise ain't predicated on my possessions. My praise is based off of what God is doing, what God has done, and what God... I'm sorry. I'm a praiser. I'm sorry. I'm a praiser. And when you sit next to praisers, all my praisers in the room, don't explain yourself this year. If you go to the mail, every time you go to the mailbox this year, soon as you open, every time you check your online banking this year, I don't want you like, yes, Lord. I want the people in the car like, oh, you got to check. I don't even want you to lie. You be like, ha, 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 ha. And they, I'm like, is that big? Ha, 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 ha. They don't realize I'm laughing because I'm really about to cry. So I'm going to just praise my way. I'm going to give you 30 seconds. If your praise is on another level, let everything. I see why you ain't shouting. You don't think you're smart enough to shout. You don't need a PhD to shout. You don't need a doctorate degree to shout. All you need is a couple vowels. Hey! E! Ah! I'm gonna give you 30 seconds. Pick your best Bible and give God. He says, 
says, it's all going to be over. Watch this. But the shouting. This is critical. This is critical. Now you understand why Philippians 4.13 says, I can do. Who going to help me preach? I ain't got but six minutes left. I'm going to do. I can do. Through. Who. Okay, I'm going to give you the message version. Look at the screen. Message version. Whatever I have. I'm finna have church. I should have preached an overflow. Overflow would have been having church with me. Whatever I have and wherever I am, I can make it through anything in the one who makes me who I am. Y'all, y'all missed it. I, D, 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 come here, D. I can make it through anything. All right? Put, put your arm in that jacket if you don't mind. I can make it through anything okay this my baby brother right all right so this what your life looks like when you in God all right because the devil keeps trying to sneak up to you from behind but God is like since you in me I'm watching your back and then when you lean on me now you can see what's coming so no matter what the devil throws you're never caught off guard because you're inside and most of us can't be strong because when we fighting over here we hit right here. Then when we fight over here, we hit right here. But he says, whatever I have and wherever I am, I, thank you, Jesus, can make it through anything in the one who makes me, Michael, who I am. This is why, no matter how hard you try, you be saying stuff to yourself before you go places. I'm going to go in here. I'm going to be cool. I don't want no problems. I don't want no trouble. As soon as you get there, folk be looking at you like who you think you are. People be offended. Who is that right there? It's because no matter what room you walk in, you can't turn off the ability to walk in. Like, you know I can make it here too. That's why the folk on your job can't stand you because you showed up and was behind them. Now some kind of way he done pro- Because I can do all things through. And God wants you strong. And who better to tell us who to be strong? This is not for everyone, but for those who are willing to admit I got weaknesses. Can we be honest? The world calls them blind spots, but for the sake of this message, I'm going to call them weak spots. I got weak spots. Can you do me a favor, bro? Before this week is out, identify your weak spots. If you don't know them, you don't know where the devil is attacking from. No, I'm, I'm preaching today if you receive it. Pastor Mike, I, what, no, one of my weak spots is actually my strongest spot. It's my heart. I'm so loyal, I'm so loving, I'm so compassionate, I so want everybody around me to go to another level that sometimes I end up being attacked by the very people sometimes I'm trying to cover. (laughs) Y'all don't want to talk to me. And so what the devil does is he uses your weak spot against you. So what the devil will do is the devil will see, oh, they got some money coming. I tell you what, let's go ahead and strike up the person that they really care about so they can start asking for some now. So that way, the moment you get it, it's gone because you weren't strong enough to say no. Ooh, y'all miss what I just said. No, you got to be strong to say, yeah, yeah, I'm going to leave that. I felt y'all pulling on me right there. No, Pastor Mike, I want to be strong, but I can, how do I know if God's really my source? Answer this question for me. Who do you run to when you get weak? When something happens in your life, what's your first natural response? Do you pray or pick up the phone? Whoever you call to talk to is your source. See, we sugarcoat God in church too much. Let's be very clear. If something jumped off at 1256, and at 12.57, you're on the phone with your friend. You are telling your friend, whether you know it or not, I need to talk to you more than I need to talk to God about it. You bring me clarity. You bring me peace. Only problem is they can't bring you victory. That's why this year you're going to have to go through some stuff and not tell nobody about it. Because that's going to be a season where it's just you and God. And it's going to be hard. You condition yourself to think you need advice. 
you condition yourself to feel like if you don't talk to certain people, you won't get peace. And I'm not saying that's a bad thing. What I'm saying is it's out of order. No, who do you run to? Better yet, what do you run to? When life happened and I get so overwhelmed, I just got to go drink something. What, that's your source? When life gets so bad, I just need to go out and clear my mind. So that's your source? Well, when I get frustrated, I pick my game up. I'm a gamer. I pick my game up and I play my games. I, I had to realize I had, I had too much of the dependency on that game being my peace. So I kind of had to put that game down for about a week and a half because that game is just like a blunt. That game is just like some alcohol. See, here's the problem. Church people pick what's socially acceptable. No, if I'm in a house and my kids need me and I'm neglecting them because I'm on the game, that's just as bad as being in the streets all night. So I had to figure out what am I running to? Number three, where do you run to? This is critical because in our text today, he shows us that it is possible to be saved but not strong. This is heavy today. You can be, and because God comes to, comes to Joshua. I'm in Joshua chapter one. Brother, he comes to Joshua and he says, Moses, my servant is dead. That's a heck of an opening line right there. He walks up to Joshua and says, hey, my servant Moses is dead. Therefore, the time has come for you to lead these people. Pastor Mike, why did he tell them that? The people had been mourning for 30 days. Why were they mourning? They didn't know what was going on with Moses. They thought he was dead. Is he alive? Is he gone? You know Moses would disappear and he would come back with the Ten Commandments. Moses was known for doing that, but this time they're feeling like he's serious. Pastor Mike, how do they don't know? Because in Deuteronomy it tells me, watch what it says. It says right here in Deuteronomy, so Moses, the servant of the Lord, died. There in the land of Moab, just as the Lord has said. Look at the next verse. The Lord buried him. You've been in church 40 years and never heard that. You heard Moses died and you heard Joshua took over, but you never knew that Moses never had a funeral. They never had a chance to say goodbye to Moses. Moses died and the scripture says the Lord buried him. The Lord buried him. Y'all missed that. The Lord buried him. When I tell you to be strong this year, I'm not telling you to give up on people. Because there are certain people who are going to need you. What I'm telling you is to give those people to God. <laughs> Do you want to know why I believe God buried Moses and didn't let Joshua and his people bury Moses? They honored Moses so much. That had they buried Moses, they would have kept coming back to view his grave. I'm going to mess you up. If Moses died on this side of the river and on the other side of the river is the promised land, that means that they would have made it to the promised land and out of affection for who they used to have, kept walking back into the past. That's why some of y'all can't get forward. It's because every time God takes you forward, you start reminiscing on dead stuff and dead people and dead places. And you start wondering to yourself, I wonder what they doing. The same thing they was doing when they drove you crazy last year. Bump somebody say, he preaching to you, not me. God says, no. Michael, God says, no. The Lord buried Moses. The Lord buried Moses. And here it is. Y'all pray for me. Joshua toe up. They've been mourning for 30 days. Joshua toe up. I want to pause and parenthetically digress because here's what I'm supposed to tell you. Stop mourning. But I just want to put this out here. If something ever happened to me, y'all need to be toe up. I, I don't, hear me. I want to be very clear. We're going to have a problem. I want you, if somebody posts on Facebook, Pastor Mike will want us to be strong. I want you going to come in. No, he won't. He wanted us to act a fool. I need running, I need, I want to be a heaven, oh, all right, all right, back to the sermon, I'm just telling you, we're back to the sermon now, so he goes to Joshua, he says, hey, Moses dead, Joshua like, what, he says, yeah, and I need you to get up and take these people to the promised land, what, what you, wait, wait, time, time out, he's like, nah, ain't no time to time out, ain't no time, I don't let you cry for 30 days, the time, Michael, for mourning 
It's over. I need you to put this in your notes. Morning. Spell morning. M-O-U-R-N-I-N-G. Morning. I want you to put M-O-U-R-N-I-N-G. N-I-N-G. That is a season of crying. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy, Michael, comes in the M-O-R-N-I-N-G. Now, I want you to see the juxtaposition. Mourning, M-O-U-R, is a season of crying. Mourning, M-O-R-N, is a season of joy. The question ain't if God's given me mourning. The question is which one you sit in. For the scripture says those who sowed in tears will reap in joy. And the problem with the church is you shout before you comprehend. So the scripture says those who sow in tears will reap in joy. But you only reap in joy if you go through something bad enough that make you... And Joshua tore up. Bro, t Joshua gone. What you... I can't do it with that. Mo Mo Moses never showed me how to use the staff. I don't know how to use the staff. These people ain't going to listen to me. I'm the youngest one. I do crew. I don't know if I could do it. And God says, hey, come here. Come here. Come here. Come here. I'm, I'm paraphrasing. He said, hey, ready or not, it's your time. M Michael, you missed your shout. R ready or not? But Pastor Mike, what do you mean? I'm, I'm here. I'm telling you like God told him. Ready or not? It's your time. Wait, 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 wait. I said I was going to start the business last year, but I didn't have the money. No, this the year. Ready or not, it's your time. I ain't got no experience. That's perfect. Because had you had experience, you would have got in the way. This time, you're going to do exactly what God called you. Ready or not, Michael, this is your time. This ain't for everybody. I'm not the smartest of men, not the best looking, not the smartest, not the most anointed. I'm not the biggest, not the tallest, not the strongest. But it's one thing can't nobody, she caught that. It's one thing that can't nobody convince me otherwise, that this ain't my time. I, I don't know who I'm preaching to, but death and life lie in the power of your tongue. And every now and then you got to lay hands on your own head and say, self, this is my time. It's my time for overflow. It's my time of favor. It's my time for my business to prosper. It's my time for another degree. It's my time for overflow. You ought to jump up and shout, it's my time. Towards, make them brighter. It is, it's my time. And you got to walk with a different level of boldness when you know it's your time. You've been on the bench long enough. You've been on the sideline long enough. You've been faithful long enough. You went through enough. You've been found proven. And God says, Joshua, nah, it's your time. And Joshua's sitting there and he says, why is it your time? Look at the scripture. He says, go back to the scripture. I want them to see it. He says, Moses, my servant is dead. Therefore, the time, Michael, has come for you to lead these people <laughs> for you to lead these people, <laughs> for you to you lead these people, the Israelites, across the Jordan Little into the land that I'm giving you. I I'm going to say this, and your family really need to grasp the fact that they cannot determine who's going to take them to the promise. <laughs> mm -mm. He says, why is it your time? Look at this. He says, everybody's going to the promise, but God does not talk to everybody. God talks to Joshua, but because Joshua has favor, everybody gets a word. People would treat you better if they realized the word God gave you is actually a word. Y'all don't hear me. Look what he says. We're going home right here. He says, ready or not, it's your time. And what I want you to realize, he tells him in verse 6, be strong. Woo. God says, Moses dead, now Joshua be strong. Notice that God did not say be smart because being smart is important, but it's not the priority. Notice God did not say be skilled because being skilled is important, but it's not the priority. God says, be strong. Here it is for 70 y'all. Even when you don't feel strong. Here it is, it's a word for you because the strong you is an unstoppable you. 
I'm by myself. The strong you is the unstoppable you. Joshua is probably thinking to himself, after my leader is dead, why would you tell me to be strong? Why are you telling me I can accomplish and be a warrior and be strong? What if God knew Joshua had a blind spot that after escaping Pharaoh, wandering in the wilderness, battling in the wilderness, losing loved ones in the wilderness, Joshua only knew how to fight to survive. But now you got to grow to fight to thrive. The fight that it takes to survive is very different than the fight that it takes to thrive. And what I want to submit to you that in 2024, you're, you're getting the strength to thrive that requires more than the strength to survive. That ain't for everybody. It's only for three people who your entire life you've been scratching and clawing and fighting. I told somebody yesterday, I've never had a year in my life where I started at zero. Every year of my life, I start at negative seven or negative eight. And it takes six and seven months to get all the way back to level playing field. So by the time I get back to level playing field, I experience, put this in your notes, faith fatigue. Michael, I experience faith fatigue. What does that mean? Faith fatigue is when the demands on you begin to outweigh the devotion in you. I'm so tired from doing, I never took the time to build me. Michael! This is why the scripture says, be strong in the Lord. But what if I told you when he told him Moses was dead, Moses represents more than a person. Let's go home. Moses represents, number one, put this in your notes, dead strategies. Moses represents dead strategies. That's important. Dead strategies. Moses represents an expired strategy. I want you to think about this. I want you to think about this. When Moses died, so did his way. Mo and if Joshua is insecure, I don't know how to make manna fall from heaven. God, like, cool, because you're going to a promised land that's flowing in milk and honey. You don't need food to fall from the sky. It's going to be laying on the ground. That's for six of y'all. I love your mentor, but you're going to have to pray in 2024 and ask if your mentor strategy matches your next level. No, Moses represents dead strategies. If I get in front of the Red Sea, I don't know how to part the Red Sea. I don't have a staff. Cool, you're not going to need a staff. I said this wrong in the 9 a.m., but I had to fix it at this service because when they get to the Jordan River, the priests are carrying the Ark of the Covenant. So what do they do? They walk in the river with the Ark of the Covenant. When the priests walk in the Jordan River with the Ark of the Covenant, the waters parted. So watch this. In Moses' strategy, he had to do it. In Joshua's season, he had people who could do it. Y'all don't hear me today. Seven of y'all gonna catch this. I want you to grow confidence. Be strong and confident in God. Because God's shifting you from me to we. From me to we. This mindset, this un unnatural pressure, I got me. I'll do it myself. That sounds good. Until life puts so much on you and you realize something has to die. And then it's like, no, 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 no. Joshua said, no, I don't have to do it like Moses to get Moses' results long as I stay in God's will. I tried my best to put on a suit and a three-piece suit and a big tie. I tried to stand in one spot and preach like everybody who wanted me to preach. I tried. I tried my best. It didn't work for me because that ain't me. And you want know what I discovered? My oil will never fit them and they oil don't fit me. So you might as well just be who God called. Watch this. It's a sad thing to be in a new season and be married to a dead strategy. All my entrepreneurs, I want to ask you a question this year. Maybe the problem ain't you. It's a dead strategy. You will only be as strong as your strategy. And a lack of strategy will always birth a lot of stress. Strategist, strategy just ain't business. Strategy is for everything. My sons have no idea when they get home tonight, I've made contracts. 
I made contracts for my top three boys. We're going to go through the contracts. I'm going to sit down and talk to them about what my expectations are, and I'm going to treat them like professionals. I want to be very clear. This is how this is going to go. If you mess up here, here's the consequences. They're at the age now that in um, 48 months, I can't cover for them no more. So I got to put together a strategy that helps introduce them to life. No, because I'm realizing, <laughs> this is rich. How do you keep expecting that which you never inspected? Dead strategies. I want to say this, and I pray you can put this in your notes. God is the ultimate strategist. Noah had a flood problem, and God gave him a strategy. Moses had a Red Sea problem. God gave him a strategy. Joshua had a wall problem. God gave him a strategy. Humanity had a sin problem. God gave us salvation, which is a strategy for the unsavable. And maybe that was too deep, so I go old school. Grandmama said, why are you trying to figure it out? God already got the strategy, so it's worked out. We need strength to release us from old strategies. Can you stand to your feet with me? Number two, Moses represents dead seasons. Number three, hope you can handle this. Moses represents dead squads. <laughs> there are certain circles that are suffocating you. I'm going to say that again. There are certain circles that are suffocating you. Not only did Moses die in the wilderness, but his entire generation died in the wilderness. Can I ask you a question? Do you know what happened to Moses before he died? Moses goes away to be with God. God takes him to the point where he can see the promised land. Then he calls him home. Wow. What if Moses and his entire generation dying in the same place reveals, this may be worth writing, that relationship decisions aren't just relationship decisions, but relationship decisions are destiny decisions. I will never arrive at the right place while holding on to the wrong people. Can I put scripture on it before you leave? 1 Corinthians 15 and 33. Bad company corrupts, Michael. Bad company corrupts good character. I like how it says, don't be fooled by those who say such things, for bad company corrupts good character. That literally means no matter how great of a person you are, being surrounded by the wrong people, it deteriorates your integrity. I want to leave you on this note. Who we fail to separate from in one season may cause us suffering in another season. Do I need to say that again? Who we fail to separate from in one season may cause us suffering in another season. I said it once and I'll say it again. I'm not telling you to give up on people. What I'm saying is there are certain individuals you got to give to God. You want to know why? Because what God is calling to you too, he cannot allow you to walk into those seasons with people who can corrupt your belief, <laughs> corrupt your faith. God, I pray that we will remain strong in you. God, I pray that we realize that when we say strong, we're not talking about the ability to take a lot. God, we done took enough. I'm talking about the ability to stand on your word. The ability to realize that it's not by power nor by might, but by your spirit. The ability to know that it is in you that we move, live, and have our beings. That it is in you that we understand apart from you, we can do nothing. So God, so from Birmingham to Baltimore, from Los Angeles to Louisiana, 
God, we depend on you. We lean on you. God, I thank you for every person watching me in this room and from their homes across this world. I decree and declare this will be a strong year for them. God, that they will accomplish the things that they set forth to do. I speak stability. I speak endurance. I speak strategy. I speak by faith the ability to detach from those who slow us down. I speak a level of consistency in our prayer life. I speak a level of consistency in our giving, a, a level of consistency in how we seek you in our devotion. Spirit of the living God, continue to remain, rest, rule, and abide all over our lives. God, I thank you in advance. Oh, I see them in the future, and they look so much better than they do right now. God, I thank you right now, God, that we will be living testimonies of the goodness of God. Now, devil, I see you. You got a sneaky way of every time I get convinced God's going to do it, you send a problem that makes me worry. So I speak scripture over you. No weapon formed against us shall be able to prosper. I cast down every negative thought and every negative word that's entering into their minds and their hearts right now. I come against systematic beliefs that, that are triggered in us, making us think that we can only get to a certain level before we go backwards. The devil is a liar. We are shattering glass ceilings this year. We are shattering records this year. We are shattering and breaking chains and destroying yokes this year. This will be the strongest year of our lives. God, I thank you in advance. It is in Jesus' name I pray. Can you clap your hands if you really love Jesus, man? Wow. Listen to me before you leave. I want to say this to you. Somebody say strong. I really, we start a fast today, right? So today, and if you, if you got any honor for me, I'm asking you to do this. Um, I gave you a fasting booklet. And if you don't mind, you can put that QR code on the screen, uh, whatever it takes, even if you have to take me off a, a lower third or you can just text fast lane to 28950. What's day one of the fast? I'm doing it differently this year. Normally on day one, we start the fast. But here's what I discovered in my, my years of maturing, that if we don't know where we start, we don't know if we're actually growing. That's the danger. So what I'm praying for right now is that growth. Somebody say growth. So when you get your fast pamphlet, there's an assessment in it. I want you to be honest. That's for you, but it's also for me. Why is it for me, Pastor Mike? I want to know what I need to be praying for. I want to know that if our prayer team is getting together and these are the areas that a lot of people are struggling, I want to spend time on my face before God. I'm going to say this. I don't need to be a machine gun. Let me be a sniper. Let me hone in on the areas that we need to grow in so as a team we can pray for you. That tells me what I need to be preaching. I don't need to preach on faith if your area of faith is strong, but here it is now you're dealing with your belief. I need to shift. So I need you today, day one of this fast is an assessment. I want you to take that assessment and I also want you to spend time before God about what it is you desire from God. All my couples, I don't want you to fast alone. Get together this year and say, what are we trying to hit? What are we trying to accomplish? All of you who got a tight circle and y'all are close, your friends, they're your real, real friends, get together. Go get something to eat. Sit down and say, look, what we doing? We're we going to do X, Y, Z. Who's holding who accountable? If it's three of y'all, you're going to hold us accountable for what we're not doing. You're going to hold us accountable for our devotion. You're going to send the scripture. Get together. If you get a community of people who can help you become what God called you to be, there is no devil in hell or no devil on earth that can block what God desires to do in your life. You need to say, I receive that. So listen, it is day one. I want you to take that assessment. I'm excited about what I see God doing. We're starting our 21-day fast. Who's going to fast with me this year? Anybody? Look at God right there, y'all. So once you open your pamphlet, I want to be very clear. Pastor Mike, what are we doing? If you open your pamphlet, I give you four options. You can do an absolute fast for those of you who want to do that. You can do it. We have information about how to do it correctly. We also have a partial fast. I believe we have sort of have a Daniel fast. And then we have a fast that you can choose what you want to fast from. 
a soul fast. So say you need to be off social media for 20 days. That's called a soul fast. I'm, I'm, I'm abstaining for something so I can detox my soul. Did you catch that? It may be certain music. It may be certain places. It may be certain people. Y'all may be fussing a lot right now, and y'all dating, and you both love each other, but the last six, seven, eight, nine weeks been so chaotic, you might need to come together, pray, and say, you know what? For the next 20 days, we're going to pray together. We're going to talk about Devo Energy, and after that, we're gonna, we need to detox to see if we, I don't have six months to waste figuring out if this is God or not. Let's figure this out now. Am I preaching to anybody? That sounds funny until you turn 40 and realize you wasted so much of your life on people who had no good intentions in the first place. I speak freedom over your life in Jesus' name. So all of my teenagers, ask yourself, what are you fasting from? What are you fasting from? I'm talking to my boys today about what they're going to be giving up for God all the way down to miles. I'm telling Miles, no, no wrestling probably for 21 days. He loves wrestling. So I may tell Miles, no wrestling during the week. You can watch it on the weekend. I'm trying to, I, I want to teach him at a young age how to give something up for God. That's what it is. This is not a diet. It's a fast. We're not trying to get slim. We're trying to get big. Y'all miss what I just said. We, we go into another level in God. Somebody say strong. So I'm uberly excited about it. I love you from the bottom of my heart. I want to say this to you, man. This will be a strong year from you no matter where you go. I don't care if you come today and you never come back all year. You came today. That's important to me. And I want you to walk out of here today knowing that if you stay locked in with God, whether you sitting in that pew or next week you watching from a screen, I firmly believe God has a plan for your life if you stay committed. And I can't wait to see what God does next for you. Were you blessed today? Amen. Come on, clap your hands. If you're giving, you know how to give. You can text I rock with the amount you wish to give to 28950. We love you so much. God, I pray a simple prayer. Lord, your will, nothing more, nothing less nothing else. It's in Jesus' name we pray. And everybody said, amen. We are. God bless you. Have a blessed year. Let's go. Wow. Pastor James, I tell you, there is no place like Rock City. He no said way. that Moses represented three things, yeah. dead strategies, dead seasons, and dead squad selections, yes. right? Yes, Who yes. you pick matters. You pick. And so I am so excited just to think about what God is doing, uh, right? That yeah. he is doing a new thing, yes. that we are that Joshua generation, right? The baton has been passed on, and now we get an opportunity to run with all of the things that God has called us to run with. Yeah, and that's what it is. It's an opportunity. And I think what we do with it is what we're held accountable for. Uh, and I'm excited because I just feel... I feel a corporate um, thirst and hunger to mm. be stronger spiritually, to be stronger yeah. in our prayer life, uh, and to be stronger in our relationships. Uh, and that's why today's assessment is so important because I need to see, that's first right. of all, where am I? Yep. Where Because, you know, you, you go to the mall, right, when you're trying to find a certain store, you, first it says you are here. You got to find yourself. Right. This good. is where I am now. Yep. Before I can talk about where I want to go, what direction am I headed? So it's starting today with the assessment. Make sure that you take that assessment one, one more time. If you haven't, text Fast Lane to 28950. That's Fast Lane to 28950. Today was a strong day. It yes, was a God. strong day. The and we are believing, we are decreeing, we are declaring by faith yeah. that today is one of many strong days. Absolutely. Because this will be the strongest year yet. Look, we have a lot of things coming up. Yes. And we don't want you to miss a thing. So mark your calendars yeah. for Friday, January the this 12th. Friday. That is yeah. this Friday. Yeah. All roads lead right here to Rock City. Pastor Vernon will be in the building yep. for the one night stand one night. singles tour. And we're excited about even what God is doing as we talk about new yeah. seasons. Yeah, absolutely. And it's going to be awesome, an awesome night, an uplifting night, games, performances, as well as a powerful word from our pastor's pastor, That's uh, right. Dr. R.A. Vernon. And then also we have Vision Day coming up Saturday. Yep. Vision That's Saturday. Day. It's important. Make sure you are here. Uh, make time. Uh, if you can't be here, but maybe we'll have some ways they can maybe watch it virtually or maybe catch up later. But Vision Day will be happening. Now, also today, I, I don't want to forget this, uh, because if you're giving, you know, That's so you right. know what, I want to put a 
seed you in the ground. You can give to the vision. You can give to the That's vision. It. You can give. This is my strong year seed. Uh, you can do that by texting I rock and the amount to 28950. That's I rock and the amount to 28950. Get some seed Come on. in the ground. Now listen, uh, Pastor James, you talking? You talked about giving of your offering, but maybe you want to give your life. Yes. We shared during the news how there was a brother in the lobby in real time, yeah. rededicated his life and joined the church. And so maybe you want to do the same. Yeah. You can text home to 28950. I tell you, telling God yes is the best yes you can ever give. Absolutely. Tomorrow morning, we're going to be on Devo Energy, y'all. We got to talk about this. Uh, we're going to talk about yeah. this word, Joshua chapter 1. Uh, we're going to break it down all week long, starting tomorrow at 721 a.m. Central Standard time. Listen, you want to have this fast going on. We're going to also talk about how to remain steadfast, That's unmovable, right. always, always abounding. abounding. Listen, yes, the fast God. ain't easy, but we can all do it together. So we're going to talk about that as well. So make sure you're locked in to Devo Energy tomorrow morning at 721 a.m. Central Standard Time. Hey Amen. Listen, I, I know it's kind of low and mellow. You ain't say Devo Energy right. But that's okay. We'll do it tomorrow. Oh, listen, I'm All still right. full. We'll I'm see still. you in the morning. Listen, out of time, but definitely not out of message. We yeah. truly thank God for our senior pastor, yes. first lady, first family. We pray that the Lord will bless them real good. Absolutely. So on behalf of Pastor Mike, Lady Jane, and all of us here at Rock City, Rock World, Rock Nation, we'll see you next time. Love you. Love God you. bless. Peace. Peace.